What were all of these showcases called? Is this Summer Game Fest? Yes. Over the last week, we had Summer Game Fest. We had the Devolver Digital Showcase. We had the Future Game Show. Uh, we had um, Microsoft Bethesda. And uh, today was Capcom, but I didn't check that one out. And the Gorilla Collective was also today. And then previous in the week, we had uh, Limited Run. Yes. Had a small showcase. Yes, that's and right. And Netflix had Geek Week. What? <laughs> I think they're going to be releasing some games on Netflix, kind of more interactive things. I uh, like, uh, what was it, Bandersnatch? The, the Black Mirror thing? Yeah, but I think they actually have. I mean, I think they have some developers who are developing like straight games for them but what i couldn't say interesting was that an intro i think we can get an intro out of that yeah well i'll just do this then i'll just go and that's what we're talking about and i'm Lindsay, <laughs> and i'm here with our good friend josh yo and our good friend darren hello yay perfect <laughs> that's an intro <laughs> Let's get into it. Starting with Summer Game Fest. I'm going to be honest, there wasn't a lot there that caught my eye this year. I am interested to see a bit more of um, of Marvel's Midnight Suns. I'm very burnt out on Marvel, but I do like me some tactical gameplay, and I like the RPG uh, overlay that's going on. The At Summer Game Fest itself, it was just a... Um, it was actually just like a cinematic trailer, but... There's a YouTuber, Chris Odd, who did like a 48 minute like deep dive on the gameplay of that game uh, that I think looks looks very interesting. I was definitely confused. I saw the thumbnail for that trailer today and I was like, there's another Marvel show coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Nay. Um, it is a spooky Marvel game. Well, Ooh. semi spooky. It's the Midnight Suns is the like supernatural, like witchy kind of stuff. Mm um side of things but also they've brought in iron man for some reason multiverse nonsense yeah well and i think it was just like well a uh, strategic um overlay has to have like a like a dev portion and who's gonna make weapons if not tony stark it's like ah, i other people but <laughs> yeah. i guess not um i mean it's it's a fun way just to incorporate more of the marvelness i guess uh yeah. So. No, no, no. Ab absolutely. And I mean, listen, I'm always down for more Blade. Yeah. And like, the the gameplay in it is a bit XCOM like on the on the battlefield, and then it has more of a social element back in the the base or something. Absolutely. Yeah. Like that's kind of that's the the RPG kind of um, section of the strategic overlay that I I'd been referring to. And yeah, the the tactical stuff is it's also card based. Which okay. is interesting. So well, unlike XCOM, anything that you do will work, right? So the element of randomness is not will the thing succeed. It's what cards or actions do you draw at the start of the turn. So that's where the randomness happens is like what are the tools that are available to you? Everything that you have will work, but what exactly you get is going to vary from turn to turn. Okay. So, so we'll see. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see more of that but and time will tell do they say how you get cards like is it i believe it's via the like part of the strategic overlay either research or development or something i i can't remember because okay. there are two components like one for strange and one for stark and i'm pretty sure that one of those two gives you new cards i'd have to double check again i believe the youtuber's name is chris odd and it's like a 48 minute breakdown that does a much better job of laying out the systems <laughs> than i can because it has uh you know gameplay footage well, yeah. um yeah <laughs> right we unfortunately can't spend 48 minutes on every game too <laughs> It'd be nice though. Well, yeah. uh, well, uh, well I mean, nice I guess one. if you were playing it, I'm not discussing it, but exactly, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Like as soon as if we had an early like build, then fine, but we don't, so no. Um, <laughs> what did you folks see at Summer Game Fest? Anything that drew your attention? The Mars game that had Troy Baker and oh, Fort Solace. Yeah, and Roger Clark. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge uh, Red Dead fan, and it's just, it's great to see Roger Clark back in a video game, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, Troy Baker's Troy Baker. I, it's in space. It's got some kind of horror element to it, which also seemed to be a big theme. It's a banner year for space horror. Yeah. <laughs> in a big way, which I believe, I believe Lindsay was the one that pointed that out to me, at least. Big year for space horror space thrillers there's a lot and i wonder if it has something to do with like are all the people in control star wars era kids maybe or is it a thing where we like all spent a lot of time inside over the past couple years and it's like you know what's horrifying confined spaces yeah. and not being able to see other people yeah i mean um, it's probably a bit of that i feel like sometimes these things run in cycles so Maybe we're just mm-hmm. burnt out on fantasy medieval type games and now cosmic horror in the cosmics is <laughs> sure. Sure. Is back in style. So Yeah, well I mean there was Project Callisto as well. Yeah. Uh or or the Callisto Protocol, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, so Callisto Protocol, which appears to be like just dead space. Which I'm fine with. I feel like some of the reactions that I had read post uh Games Fest was some people were a little bit disappointed about that, but like at least the first two Dead Space games are some of my favorite, and I just love the lore of it. And it just seems like the uh, Callisto um, protocol. Protocol, yeah. So now I'm saying it too. It's just building, like, is kind of a bit of the next step in that, and it just looks good. Like they know what works, so let's just go with Do it. Do more of that and better. Yeah. 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 That was the one. It had a lot of body horror in that one, didn't it? There were a few. <laughs> I think there was a, a small gameplay portion when he shoots off the arm of like one of the alien zombie people, and you just see like the bone just like kind of yep. <laughs> doing its own thing. You're like, ooh. Yeah, they're like very extra explodey zombies. <laughs> also, so this was a big thing that I actually didn't, I didn't recognize the significance of until I was looking at the reactions afterward. The trailer for Routine was a big deal because I guess Routine was one of the first games that was backed on Steam Greenlight and it had been... Uh, if like it effectively they had to like restart production when they were almost finished oh, and a lot of people thought that it was just dead and now signs of life so apparently that game is still going huh. which is yeah which is cool i like a good comeback story also the robots are unsettling robots shouldn't have teeth in my view <laughs> especially not such sharp teeth new modern warfare right Oh, yep, yeah. That's a big one. Absolutely. Modern Warfare 2. It looks like more of the same in terms of, like, what Call of Duty is, but, like, at least for the campaigns, like, I just have such a soft spot. <laughs> like, at least for uh-huh. the stories within the game, so. When it's going back to two previous characters, like Ghost and Soap from the first game. Is it? Yeah, and Price is going to be a main character, and he was in yeah. the... I mean, he was in the original Modern Warfare trilogy and in the reboot of it. I don't think I've played since the reboot. It's kind of like just going right back to the last time I was in there. See, and I'm so out of this that, like, I assumed it was a remake of Modern Warfare 2. Is it something? Oh, my God. But (laughs) but, but what is crazy is... uh, so in the second game, they're hunting a reimagining of the villain from Call of Duty 4. And then it'll have, like, and General Shepard is coming back, which is spoilers for anyone who hasn't played Modern Warfare 2, part of the original trilogy. He was, like, revealed as the bad guy. He's kind of back now putting together this new task force, which is Task Force 141, who is the same task force from the original trilogy. (laughs) But, again, it's Call of Duty. You know what Call of Duty is. It, uh... Yeah. it, It, to me, it looks fun, like... (laughs) <laughs> it's really just being the Avengers, like, of the MCU. Like, it's just pulling from all the different... <laughs> like, everybody's together. And here's what I'll say in Call of Duty's defense is never pretended to be anything other than exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. and I think there's always some beauty in that kind of just upfront honesty where it's like, look, like, you know what we are at this point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Absolutely every part of this that doesn't meet your expectations is on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And that's fair. 
this is why I'm of the loop, right? They're like not my thing, yeah, but in yeah. fairness, I've never pretended like they've they've never tried to convince me that they are. No, um, and that's totally fine. And you know what? I'm sure if if one day you were to play any of the campaigns, you would finish it, be like, you know what? That was fun, and you'd wake up the next day and be like, I can't tell you what happened, but like, <laughs> it's funny that you say that because I think I played ever. I think I played all of them up until Black Ops. Yeah. And if you put if you put a gun to my head and we're like. <laughs> you need to describe just in in the broadest strokes any call of duty campaign my brain's all over the wall (laughs) like there's it absolutely impossible you could probably make a good guess though (laughs) (laughs) what true i don't know if they're too unpredictable (laughs) actually what i would do is i would cheat and i would i would go back to like one of the original call of duties and then just like tell the story of world war ii (laughs) and be like (laughs) It's got to be close. And that's the game. Right? Yeah. Let's see what else. Oh, right. oh God. Yeah, The Last of Us is being remade again yeah. because Sony will not allow that fucking game to like not be re-released every single generation. Every game company has one of those games. Yeah, it's. I think it's still their, uh, their favorite horse. And like, I want to be clear. I liked The Last of Us, but holy shit. It came out on the PS3 and every console generation since then it's like we've got to do it again we've got to, it's like do we since it's gonna be built um kind of from the ground up on the last of us part two engine yes they'll at least be able to add a lot of the accessibility options and i think that's sure. probably a big part of it i think another thing that other people had pointed out online is that the redesigning um uh ellie again to kind of make her more different from Elliot Page because if you remember when the first oh, game I do. came out, at least in the early footage, it looked a lot like him, and so that was a bit of an issue. And I think some of the screenshots you we, they've shown from this remake has been a, more of what you see of her in Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, like the uh, the gameplay of Part Two in the game of Part One, like I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, you've made, I think, as good a case for it as you reasonably and, could. And, and I'll say it right now, like, it's not a day one buy for sure. It's, like, down sure. the line when it's Wait, half when it comes off. comes on sale or something. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's, yep. not, it's yep. nothing I need to play again. And with the TV show coming out within the next year, like, I almost want to save that replay of it just to experience it with mm-hmm. the show versus the game, but... Filming wrapped up in Alberta just recently. They said to expect something very soon, so I'm sure they have at least an early trailer. You'd imagine. Well, we will we will see. The only other thing that I saw that I had some opinion on was Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, which oh, is yeah. just like the 40k version of Vermintide. Yeah. Which is a fun kind of melee left for dead like um that i that i enjoy quite a bit i'll be honest i'm not a huge 40k guy i actually prefer warhammer fantasy more which is interesting given that my my preference is typically for sci-fi over fantasy but not in this particular case what they had to show looked fine the thing is is that a game like that is you always kind of knew what it was going to look like the question is going to be how it plays yeah and, and that's not clear to me yet. And also, like, how fast they can, like, put out content for something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you, you can play through Left for Dead probably in an afternoon, just going through the yes. story. But it's just, like, you know, what does post-content look like? What flavors are you adding to mix up the, the minute-to-minute? And, like, that's really what it will come down to. And then the question becomes, did they did they learn their lessons in that regard from Vermintide 2 or not? And I guess we'll see. And one of the best parts about it is, like, it is part of Game Pass. So if you're subscribed to that, you can, True. you know, download and at least try it out. Absolutely. Uh, I guess the uh, there was one other thing. This can kind of lead into our next conversation because it showed up in, in multiple places. Stormgate which is the game that is being produced by Frost Giant Games, which are a bunch of former Blizzard devs, StarCraft and WarCraft veterans. Mm Going to be honest, was a little disappointed that there still doesn't appear to be anything for that game in terms of 
like gameplay footage. Yeah. And they have a beta coming out in 2023. 23 okay. Yeah. Yeah, like that's so. the thing is they they do have a beta coming but not until like mid next year, I think. Okay. Do they even talk about what the gameplay is like? To my knowledge, no. It was just the cinematic trailer, some brief lore stuff. I didn't love the design, like the art design. I didn't think that the trailer, there was much to be excited about, but it's early days. We'll see. Yeah. I'll reserve judgment. But yeah. it was not a first showing that wowed me. And nothing else they did announce, it would it would be free to play when it does get released, right? Yes. So, again, like with Dark Tide, like... Yes. It is kind of accessible just to jump in and try it. And... Yep. No, absolutely. And, like, we'll we'll see. And no uh, NFTs, was... which was kind of fun to see through all the presentations. <sighs> like, yeah, that's big. our game will be free to play, but no NFTs. NFTs are blockchains. It's like get your fucking <laughs> apes out of here, Christ! <laughs> this comes at an especially good time, given that uh, that Celsius, which is like a crypto like holding site appears to be undergoing a liquidity crisis, Oof. which is really bad. <laughs> Saying, well, we can call on the money, we just don't have it for you at this exact moment. <laughs> that is actually the same as not having the money at all, as every major financial institution has found throughout <laughs> history. It's like the digital equivalent of a bank run, and those aren't good. <laughs> so anyway, all of this to say, glad there are no NFTs, uh, fuck crypto, I'm moving along. I was excited to see a new Layers of Fear yes. announcement in there. Oh, yes, yes. Third one from them. Layers of Fears. Yeah, you gotta love it. They just <laughs> add an S on the end. And... Oh, yeah. <laughs> When I watched it at the end of it, I was like, huh, that's weird to like have a, a remaster or a remake of a game that was popular and came out a few years ago. I was like, well, uh -huh. good for them. <laughs> it was like days later when I was reading some post stuff, they were like, yeah, it was kind of weird. They just put an S on it as a sequel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to Fast and the oh. Furious type titling here. Absolutely. Yeah. And they already had Layers of Fear too. So. Yeah mix it up for the third one well and the third one's going to be a little bit different as far as your character as well like instead of just playing one i think you play through all the generations of a family so you can really feel the passed down trauma everyone loves some good generational trauma it'd be cool <laughs> if one of these days like these i guess walking simulators is what they're commonly referred to just has like a really really in-depth customizable character creator so you can spend four hours creating your character and then you just walk and then you never see them yeah Absolutely. You, and you yeah. just walk around it's like <laughs> we all know at least one person who would spend like three hours creating a character that she would never see just be real upset when she finds that out too she would still happily create the character if she knew though she absolutely would anything else for summer game fest just goat simulator 3 oh yeah oh right just Fuck. skip right over the second one into the third they're pulling a traveling skip. wallberries uh thing right now i'm excited that's a one of my first like physics type schemes yeah. that i oh yeah really played so like i never beat it or anything but it'll it'll be fun to see with the new generation of hardware and software like how much better the what they do with it yeah. just jumping out of a trampoline into a hang glider you know is that game beatable well, i think you can collect all the things yeah okay yeah all right gotcha yeah. gotcha yeah i've never played it but just like seeing gameplay footage of it i confess that the the idea of beating it never really crossed my mind <laughs> yeah i don't know if that needs to be your goal either in that game in the yeah. age of achievements if you 100 percent that have you beaten the game <laughs> certainly you've spent a great deal of time on it whether it is beating it i suppose in the eyes of the beholder yeah if you feel like a winner then sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well devolver Maybe we could talk about them really quick. I did not watch Devolver, but I will give my opinions nonetheless. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. Devolver was really was really short. Okay. Um, it only had five games that were announced. I missed the third one, but I saw the other four. Going to be honest, they were they were all pretty good. So the first one, which has been on my radar for quite some time now, is Cult of the Lamb. That game's a blast. So it's a roguelike that is um that is using a kind of like happy tree friends aesthetic okay if y'all remember the happy tree friends yeah yeah but mixed with occultism 
And so you are playing as a lamb who obtains dark powers, and you have to create a cult and look after this cult. And this cult (laughs) is composed of these cute woodland creatures. The gameplay is you rogueliking around, swords, axes, cutting the shit out of the other denizens of, of the forest, using dark magic, blood sacrifice, all of that stuff. A demo was released on Steam. I played it. That game is rad, and cool. I will be picking it up as soon as it comes out because it is a lot of fun. And will you um, be uh, streaming it? You're goddamn right I will. <laughs> All right, so, so remember the release date and then find Venomous Goat on uh, Twitch.tv. Yeah. <laughs> August 11th, I think. Yeah, book it off. I will be indisposed that week, but the following <laughs> week I will probably dive into it. Okay. So Cult of the Lamb. Amanda the Adventurer, Wooly's Revenge. (laughs) Yes. Look that up if anybody is watching this and doesn't know what we're referring to. Look it up. Another one was Angerfoot. Okay. Great name. It... (laughs) So there's been a demo of this for a while, right? I believe so. Yeah, I've definitely seen at least Jacksepticeye play it on YouTube. I'm quite sure that there has been a, a demo around for a while. So so that's Angerfoot. As described in the title. It is exactly what it says on the tin. Yes. <laughs> um, I heard some people describing it as it feels like like first person Hotline Miami, which I, I get for sure. Yeah. It's so fucking stupid, but I appreciate that it just leans into it, you know? Yeah, and, and you have to respect that, like... Know what you are and just revel in it. Do they ever. Just kicking your way through drug dens. <laughs> Kick for justice? <laughs> I, I, it feels like the character probably doesn't give a shit. Like the Punisher with, with cleats. Yeah. <laughs> so another one that was up was the Plucky Squire. That game looked fantastic. The Plane with Dimensions, I think, is a, a very cool idea. Yeah. Yeah, really neat. I confess, when I, when it was just like a kind of 2D side-scroller thing, I was like, eh, it's okay. And then there was like Punch-Out with a badger. And I was like, all right, I'm warming. I'm warming. And then he jumped off the page. And I was like, this is a very cool idea. Yeah, it seems like there's enough like gameplay variety to kind of keep it fresh, you know? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm curious to see how that pans out. It's going to be hard to do right, I think. Um, because yeah. that that variety, it has to uh, not just be a gimmick, mm-hmm. right? Like those con- those constituent parts have to be done well, and we'll see we'll see if they pull it off. Yeah, but I'm I, interested anyway. As if it's like a nice twelve hour game with you know maybe ten different like varying mm-hmm. gameplay things, like that might just be the the ticket there, just to keep it sweet, short, and fresh. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of worried it's it's going to be like a WarioWare, <laughs> like throwing the mini games at you real fast and just figure it out kind of thing. It looks a little more sedate yeah. than WarioWare. <laughs> looks a little closer to like a Paper Mario meets like Zelda Top Down or something. <laughs> yes, I think that's a perfect description mm. based on, on what we saw anyway. And then there is skate story which was the last one that was announced this is a like a skateboarding game where you are a demon made of glass and pain and you (laughs) must skate yeah demonic skateboarding simulator (laughs) yeah i think it'll look cool because it's like all neon looking backgrounds and then you're made of glass so the engine could make it look really cool. Agreed. I also, I, I really dug the soundtrack. Like, if that is representative of what the rest of the game's music is going to be like, I think it'll probably be a uh, a really pretty game. Did it come off more as, like, a Tony Hawk pro skater type game? or No. So there's, like, a no. story to it? In the way that art house films have stories, okay. which is kind of, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Probably going to give it a try just to see what the fuck is going on yeah. honestly yeah. i'm very curious to how they thread that particular needle it's giving me very like nostalgic vibes for some just because like the levels come mm. at you like kind of like how star roads used to do like way back in the day i think any time that a work is trying to be poignant it always 
kind of ends up evoking nostalgia Mm -hmm. in some way. Yeah. And I don't really know what the connection is there. Really triggers an emotion cell in your brain. Right? (laughs) But like the same one for some reason. I don't really, I don't really know why. (laughs) Well, that was everything for Devolver. I did not watch the future game show. Neither did I. It's got a few overlaps of smaller games like Nightingale. Yes. Um, Turbo Golf Racing. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? It's like the Rocket League. I think you're on a, like a giant like putting green instead. Oh, interesting. Yeah. My dad's going to be excited about Alaskan Truck Simulator. <laughs> he loves the Ice Road Truckers show, so... Now he gets an opportunity to to live out his dreams. Yeah. <laughs> Is that show still on the very like misleadingly named History Channel? Uh, probably. Doesn't the History Channel now have like a History Channel two that you have to pay for, but it shows like history, whereas like history is now just trash. There's a time in the mid two thousands when the History Channel was still. It was a lot of history, but also the like paranormal and cryptozoology stuff was starting to creep in. Yeah. Because before that, the History Channel was like all like World War II stuff, almost exclusively, uh, which is why some people called it the Hitler Channel. <laughs> so then they split the difference and did a bunch of shows on Nazis and the occult. <laughs> and then eventually they got off that track and were like, you know what says history? Crab fishermen. <laughs> Yeah, you just you just have to go where the uh, the money is, right? For better, or for worse. I would argue that if you're called the History Channel, you should try to stay somewhat to your mission. But uh, modern history. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess history's not cool anymore. Uh, right? Yeah, because history is a famously cool subject in the first place. Yeah. Listen, I think history is cool, but that says considerably more about me than it does about the public's perception of history (laughs) um so alaskan ice road truckers for your dad yeah there's a lot of sims in this one it seems like i guess you could count f1 manager as a sim brewmaster which is one i'm interested in beer simulating game interesting i mean simulators are huge they're not necessarily something that like I'm into, but they seem just to do really well. Microsoft Flight Simulator is still going strong after a million fucking years. <laughs> I genuinely cannot believe that that game is still getting made. But the thing is that people that are into those games are like into those games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're adding the uh, Wright Brothers plane. Do you think it will have the uh, kind of realistic flying distance and time that the actual Wright Brothers plane had? Because it's Microsoft Flight Simulator? Yeah, like you just fly for like 30 seconds and that's like the extent of your journey. (laughs) (laughs) They will probably be like, what if it worked a little better? Okay. Although, I don't know, maybe it'll just be a skin. I look forward to in the future when the next tropical storm or hurricane that happens uh-huh. this is they have realistic weather someone flies the wright brother plane into a, to a hurricane. <laughs> just fucking disastrous <laughs> uh, Im- immediate crash all hands lost <laughs> that's the kind of content i want to see <laughs> people flying the kitty hawk and dying <laughs> no just flying them into hurricanes and those kind of <laughs> oh gotcha yeah. like in a biplane yeah, yeah. yeah uh, talking of that i also see I'm just taking a quick look at a future game show here. Airport Sim, a simulator about working at an airport. Again, it's they're popular games. Do you get to do all the roles or are you just like... It's mostly security. Oh my God. Okay. So you just stand at a computer and you just see people walk through. I thought it'd be like Control Tower Sim. Every once in a while you have to be like, you gotta empty your bottle, ma'am. No, your shoes have to come off. That's two milliliters too much toothpaste. I, I also was thinking along your lines, Lindsay, but now I want Darren to be right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize at first that Darren was joking, but I actually I want that now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like papers, please, but modern airport security. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could do something interesting with that. Yeah, or you add in like a bus simulator where you have to drive those like little carts through the airport oh my god (laughs) so you have that you're just doing loops all day dropping people off yeah different old ladies yelling at you yeah another one where you're explaining to an elderly couple how the uh 
touchless check-in works. Oh my god. <laughs> is that? Oh, um, oh. Can you imagine? And then the first expansion will be like your flight's delayed and it's the person who has to stand at the gate and being like, "Look guys." <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking misery simulator. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want it to be like a small airport where it's like overcooked. Oh my god. Oh. And you have to have four people do all the different roles to get passengers through. Oh, that'd be great. Holy shit. <laughs> oh. oh, the chaos. Man, there's an idea. Yeah. It's like developers contact us. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah do you want to do the work of developing it because i sure don't i just want to see it i play it <laughs> so much work um a lot of little indies in this one the biggest excitement for me is sequel to cult classic deadly premonition oh right just a wacky survival horror it's just that it got ported right it was already on well it was playstation it was on the switch it's releasing on pc now Okay. Yes. Um, which I don't know. I never. I, it seems more like a PC game to me. So. Yes, yeah, Switch and Windows. What an interesting combination of consoles. <laughs> Probably one of those situations where like only Nintendo would give them funding. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Like, oh, now we have money because it was good, and we can put on the PC. And next year they'll announce it for the PlayStation. The year after they'll announce it for Xbox. Yeah. It'll yeah. go on Game Pass, but they won't even announce it. It'll just like be in there one day. Yeah. 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 Let's move on to uh, Bethesda or Microsoft Bethesda. This was pretty hefty. Um, it was about 90 minutes. Yeah. So there was a lot to show off. It wasn't a ton of filler. No, which was nice to see where it's just like, look, we're going to we're just going to show you stuff mm -hmm. that they say will come out in the next 12 months. But like, I'm a little skeptical. We'll see. Wondering if that's 12 months following now or the next chunk of 12 months which would be all of yeah. 2023 exactly like do you mean june of next year or do you mean december 31st i would assume december 31st i think that probably what it is is that they're shooting for the next like actual 12 months but a bunch of this is going to end up delayed they're being vague on purpose that you yeah can't be mad <laughs> they'll be like oh we meant the next not this. <laughs> That's my suspicion, but we'll we'll see, I suppose. Mm -hmm. We got to see a bit more of Redfall, which I'm unsure about, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you why. I am interested in Redfall if it is more prey than Left for Dead. I am uninterested if it is left for dead with vampires yeah and special abilities the two big things that stood out to me was one that they really emphasize solo play i found interesting because like typically something like that you either have yeah it looked like something that would only be fun in multiplayer yeah like left for dead but yeah multiple points during the show or the trailer or the demo mm -hmm. they did emphasize like solo play so i don't know if that means with ai teammates or that everything's being designed around that you can just go through um, solo. I'm really, I'm really curious because that is going to, that's going to make or break that game for me in yes. terms of like whether I'm interested in it. I like a good multiplayer experience, but I kind of have burnt out on Left 4 Dead likes right now. Yeah. And I would like to try something different. I'm sure matchmaking will be available in the game, but of course, anything like that is, is just, funner with friends and that's you know can be a barrier of entry for you know mm -hmm. a lot of people so no 100 percent. i uh, i like the design yeah. and i i liked uh, especially the um the environment design yes I, I i was i was actually pretty into um fond of the church that they showed off yeah. i like how they had said like it's set in a tourist town so we'll have all the fun tourist trappings and it's like okay so then we can just do whatever we want absolutely absolutely and then i will say the second thing that really intrigued me about the game was uh stealth seemed to be a very viable option that they mm, also emphasized yeah. which again it's we'll have to see yeah because i'm curious to see how that holds up whether it's one of those things like because there are definitely some games where the purpose of stealth 
is to position yourself better so that when you do open up and it is no longer stealthy, you are like as well positioned as possible. Like this is how XCOM 2 yeah, yeah. handled it, right? Where the idea is not that you will stay in stealth the whole time. The idea is that you will set yourself up to make breaking out of that stealth or to break out of that stealth in like an optimal position for when the fighting starts. So I'm curious as to whether it's going to be more like that approach or if it's going to be something more uh more like what arcane austin has done before right with prey where stealth can be considerably more viable um across the board yeah i need to see a little more because i haven't quite seen enough to make up my mind on it yet yeah and kind of my interest in it is also to see what post-launch content Mm -hmm. will look like and again like with it being part of game pass i think kind of makes it a bit easier because you don't have to have like season passes necessarily or big expansion packs but again like it'll just be like like what does this game look like a month from release two months post release three months post release because that seems to be like the hardest part with anything like this is just the lack of content after if it is viable and fun to do solo then that's actually fine for me in the sense that I like it when games end. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah, like yeah. So that that part doesn't worry me so much. If it is going to be like more multiplayer focused, then I mean, that stuff is going to be super important. Yeah. But yeah, I am, I am for reasons that have never been quite clear to me, kind of a sucker for vampires. So I'll give it a shot. <laughs> ha! Sucker. Anyway. So, um... <laughs> What else do we have here? Oh, a really quick thing about Microsoft Flight Simulator, because we brought it up before. Saw that there was going to be the Spirit of St. Louis, which was uh, Lindbergh's plane, and also spaceships from Halo. The Pelican, yeah. Yeah. Which was the part that I saw was the closest thing to ever making me want to play one of these games. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to call on your expertise, uh, but I, I didn't even have to. You were like, the Pelican! Also, on, on a bit of a side note, like I don't think any of us have played Microsoft Flight Simulator, like the latest one. No. Okay, because I, I was going to ask, were you able to go into space before, or is this also a new... Well, from the trailer, they actually weren't in space. It was actually just the Pelican flying, like... A plane. Yeah, it's kind of just like a personnel carrier from the big ships to the planet. So I guess mm. they're just focusing on the in atmosphere part of that. I mean, makes sense. I thought it had ended like with a small part with them in space, didn't it? I believe so, but that is, I don't think was the intended function of oh. that particular <laughs> type yeah, of craft. Yeah, I, oh, I took that to be more of a like it is most recognizable in space. And so it was just kind of like a, almost like a title card yeah. kind of um, thing, like a still. I think, than... I think that's the premise of spoilers if you haven't played Infinite yet, which I have not. I think that's where the game starts is in a pelican that's running out of oxygen. So you have to breach a enemy vessel. Oh, okay. They're not meant for long-term space flight, I'm pretty sure. Watch someone gotcha. correct me hard. It's very <laughs> upset. <laughs> I would like to draw your attention to something said at minute 87 of the video. Yeah. Except we have not been talking for 87 minutes yet. Whatever. <laughs> Fuck you, nerds. Um, none of you guys have played Hollow Knight because that got announced that the sequel was being... Um, I'm not a Metroidvania guy, yeah. but I did see lots of chatter about Hollow Knight. Yeah. It lots is a beloved game. Yeah. One, yeah, and I'm glad the fans have some information about it. And But I'm in the same boat, too. I'm not the biggest Metroidvania game. I just recently finished Fallen Order for the second time, and I think that's the limit of my... <laughs> Metroidvania. <laughs> and it's only because I like Star Wars more than, like... <laughs> <laughs> anything sure. else so totally but. fair uh, talking actually of yeah. something that it might be a metroidvania or it might just be a side scroller but something that i was interested in the last case of benedict fox yeah it looks like a lovecraftian kind of um influence like victorian horror side scroller yeah. which everything except the side scroller part does it for me so i'm gonna check it out anyway yeah that game had some sick ambiance and i'm very interested to see how it plays definitely side scroller 
unclear whether or not it's a an actual like metroidvania though and even if it is i'd still probably try it yeah that was one when i remember watching the trailer i, I was just thinking like i hope it doesn't overstay its welcome mm, mm-hmm. you know because it's just like a lot of things going on that looks wonderful but like 12 hours in it can can wear on you absolutely games like that can get too long but he appears to be getting help finding his father's killer from a demon or something yeah like a demon that's possessing him yeah i think he plays a detective in that one yes that was my impression is that he's a detective who appears to be possessed and is getting assistance from the demon that is possessing him and you could do interesting things with that so i will definitely be giving it a look because i love occult shit yeah uh, 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 what <laughs> i i don't exactly know how to say the name of this title but it was like pentiment yes from obsidian yep. that might be the thing i'm most excited about it looked gorgeous it like it just has such a style to it and kind of like a narrative mystery but just like a little more going on gameplay wise i'll be honest that one didn't that one didn't grab me so much but i thought the art <laughs> style was very cool yeah. Like it was a neat idea. It was a neat idea to have it in the style of a medieval tapestry. I think I'd really like this if it were like like a four hour. Yeah, just if it doesn't overstay its welcome, then yeah, I think there's something cool there. I mean, Obsidian can write. Yeah, so um, I'm sure that that part. I'm sure that that part will be done well. And from what I read about it, it seems like it's an Obsidian uh, passion project. Which anytime you hear passion project attached to anything, it's like good or bad, like. There, there's some love put into that and like this is what they want to be doing so narrative mystery that he's been working on since 1992 jesus fucking christ i haven't thought about anything for that long <laughs> ever i mean i'm not that old but was it was it josh sawyer that said that yeah okay i'll i'll keep an eye on it it's not a thing that i'm you know going out of my way for but mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch yeah i'll watch and we'll, and we'll see it's gonna be very um like auteur style like kind of maybe a bit heavy-handed i don't know if that's the worst thing ever though sometimes that's good <laughs> yeah. just depends on what you like right like i said you you have to respect someone with a vision or like a team mm-hmm. with a vision like good or bad yes i expect it to get a lot of hate a lot of it unnecessarily <laughs> I bet it will be very polarizing. Yeah. <laughs> I get the impression it's not going to be a game that has a lot of people that are just kind of meh on it. Yeah. I definitely tend to come down more on the hate side of those things, um, but I'm just not a vocal asshole about it because <laughs> it's really easy to just not play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And again, like, I'm keeping an open mind, right? I have no, I like Obsidian, um, and I have no idea how this is going to pan out. So we'll see. We'll see. Which, you know, is a recurring theme for, like, all of these games because none of them are out yet. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. It's the tagline of this video. That's right. We'll see. We'll see. Have to keep an eye on it. Maybe. I'm curious. Um, <laughs> now, talking of games that actually are already out, it was announced that Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal are going to be ported to PC and Microsoft consoles. As a huge Persona fan, this is very exciting for me, not because it affects me personally. I have all of the consoles needed to play all four of those games (laughs) anyway. I am one of the eight people in North America with a PlayStation (laughs) Vita, Um, but I am excited that more people are going to get the opportunity to play those games. Yeah. They are certainly not for everybody, but God damn it. Uh, do Do I really enjoy them? And Persona fans have been clamoring for a release of um, Persona 5 Royal for years now because Atlas is a uh, a puzzling company <laughs> as regards what games get released on what platforms. Did you mean like 3 and 4 or, or are you just talking about Xbox? Yeah, well, so the reason why people have been clamoring for release for that one in particular is... Uh, for two reasons, okay? Mm-hmm. So, one, it is the most recent game, and a lot of people have only played Persona 5 and haven't played the earlier ones. So, 5 is the most recent one, and 5 Royal is the kind of definitive expanded version of 5. 
So there was a lot of clamoring for that reason, just because it's by far the most successful of the franchise. And the second reason is because Persona 5 Strikers, which is a uh, Musou game that is based off of Persona 5, is a direct sequel to Persona 5, and you can get Strikers on PC, but you couldn't get Persona 5 (laughs) on PC. And so this is what I'm saying about Atlas having just like really bizarre decisions about what gets to what platform. It's also like, so Shin Megami Tensei, which is the series that Persona was originally a spinoff from and is now its own thing. The last two mainline games have been on Nintendo consoles, including Shin Megami Tensei 4, which again, was a mainline entry in the game, was on the DS. <laughs> okay. And, But the third one was on PS2, and then the fifth one was on Switch. Just all over the map. Like, they tend to keep the Shin Megami Tensei games on Nintendo consoles now, but Persona has been all Sony, except for Strikers, which <laughs> they put on the Switch, even though it was a sequel to Persona 5, yeah. which isn't on the Switch. Like, it is all very puzzling shit. But anyway, I'm I'm glad that more people are gonna are gonna get an opportunity to play those, and they're gonna be on Game Pass, so it'll be uh, yeah, it'll be chill. So four and five have definitive editions that are just like unanimously agreed to be better than the base versions. Persona Three is different in the sense that there were kind of two editions after the base game. Each of them do different things well. And so one of them was Persona 3 FES, which was for the cons was for PS2, and Persona 3 Portable was for the PSP. And they're porting the portable one instead of 3 FES, and that pissed some people off. But those people are wrong. Portable, the better of the two versions. Alright. I will definitely be playing them when they come out. So <sighs> <laughs> the excitement. <laughs> if they are not for you, that's totally fine. But I am amped to hear what you think one way or the other even if you hate them that's fine i just (laughs) want to be able to talk to somebody about them (laughs) and atlas had announced that persona 3 and 4 are also coming to sony absolutely yes so so persona 3 portable and uh 4 golden will also be available um on sony consoles now as well uh well to be like ps4 and 5 they were always available on sony consoles they were for a long time only available on sony (laughs) consoles so anyway i could talk about persona forever but we're not going to do that i was going to say just on a quick note uh arc 2 got announced at the uh i was just about to bring that up showcase oh yeah which i don't think any of us are big arc fans or have you even played the games? It's something that I would be interested in, but also one of those things where everybody got into it at the same time, and then like a month later, I looked at it and went, "Oh no, I'll just get, I'll just get my ass beat yeah. <laughs> on mm-hmm. the internet. Like mm-hmm. it's too late to hop in." <laughs> uh, yeah, I missed the entry point, and now there is no entry. Yeah. So the interesting thing too is that. It was revealed at the end of the trailer that Vin Diesel's going to be at least a main character in it. And then after the fact, it came out that there's also a television show. What? That is going to accompany the game. That to me is more interesting. It's animated, uh, by the way, but it'll be starring such people as Vin Diesel, obviously. uh, Gerard Butler. uh, Elliot Page. Russell Crowe. David Tennant. And Jeffrey Wright. What? (laughs) What? Well, if you look at the thumbnail for Arc 2, there's a very Maui from Moana looking Vin Diesel. Yes. <laughs> so yes. It, I think it will have their likenesses as well. Yeah, but I was just shocked to see that many <sighs> big names, especially yeah. Russell Crowe. Like, that just seems... <laughs> well, and, and like, Vin Diesel makes sense in the yeah. sense that, like, Vin Diesel is, is famously a huge nerd. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So see, seeing yeah. him, not strange at all. But... That is, yeah. that's a lot. I know. Espe- especially because, like, yeah. I've got nothing against Ark, but it's not exactly, like, a marquee property either. Yeah. I think that's why they spent the money on getting those big names. Yeah. Fuck, right. I, guess, I guess Yeah, so. for people like you that are like, oh, I'm not interested, really, in a TV show about a game I've never 
been interested yeah. in. But you put yeah. all those big names together, you're like, oh, I should maybe check it out. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Like, we'll we'll see how it pans out for him. Yeah, like, Arc 2, still not necessarily interested in it, but, like, now this animated television show is, like, for the next little bit, like, I, I'm just fascinated to see what it'll be when it comes out, like. I'm curious to see it because of everything I've heard about the Arc games and enjoyed watching other people play in them. The story hasn't really been mm-hmm. a big yeah. part of mm-hmm. that. I mean, I'm sure it's a good story. I just, I've heard nothing about it, so. Darren, when you started saying Jeffrey Ur, I did not think it was going to end in right. I definitely <laughs> thought you were going to say Jeffrey Rush, and I was going to be like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you are much too big for this. Well, I think both Jeffreys are a little too big for this, but, like, again, it's... There, there, uh, true. There, there's got to be something there that's like outside of money that's drawing them into this like project. Which Pretty cool dinosaurs I, that you can control and ride. Feels like a '90s kid show that we would have watched. It does feel like a '90s <laughs> kid show. Holy shit! Or it could also be an '80s kid show. There are mm, there are shades mm-hmm. of He Man there. Also a bit of GI Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Mash all of them up. Put it. Put it all in there. Somebody described. Uh, the Mortal Kombat series as being what it's like to be a child just playing with a bunch of your like disparate toys and making them fight each other. (laughs) You have like the magic ninjas, but also you have a guy who's just a cop and like doesn't have any like any special abilities except a gun. Yeah, military lady who's just angry. (laughs) Robots. Yeah, hat is a knife. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, lizards. A lizard man. Australian. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Ark feels not identical, but the same kind of like wish fulfillment. Yeah. Of just like, you know what? What if we just like, what if we just put everything in, you know? (laughs) Now I'm just thinking of Mortal Kombat as the village people of video games. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Speaking of big sequels of games that we'd never played the first one of, Overwatch 2. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Right. It had one of the best looking trailers of the lot, which is not surprising because that's like Blizzard's thing. Yeah. But I felt nothing. Yeah. Because I've I've played Overwatch and it is, that game is just not for me. Well, I've yeah. heard a lot of disappointment about Overwatch 2 already it was kind of promised as being like a lot of big changes from the first game and it really seems like that's not it seems like the reaction now is like why didn't you just make this an update yeah the big changes too are also to the esports side of it sure and that's something like i just i can't comment on that but like i just know a lot of people are very passionately against those changes yeah i think they were trying to go for some more like character balancing and i think the biggest thing is it's going to go from 6v6 to 5 5v5 okay in going to 5v5 i think you're moving like you're going from two tanks to one tank and that's a big issue but again like i can't speak on any of that on the plus side all these esports teams already know which of their players they're gonna fire from the team (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's always one in every team there is one person that is understood to be the one that we cut loose if we have to. And if you don't know who that person is, it's you. <laughs> Sticking with Blizzard, the Necromancer, and then also Diablo 4 was shown off. Yep, so Necromancer is the last class to be announced yep. for Diablo 4. Uh, fan favorite Necromancer. Yes. I remain cautiously optimistic. Yes for diablo 4 i actually liked diablo 3 and i didn't mind the i didn't mind the kind of saturated more cartoony um aesthetic that they that they went for that being said i'm okay too with them returning to a more diablo 2-ish kind of darker um darker grittier style we'll see how, how it pans out blizzard has not exactly given me um reason to be super confident about their microtransaction practices so we will see there is a real chance that they're gonna fuck that all up in a big way i don't like how it's going to be open world diablo 4 being open world is pretty iffy to me and like realm bosses that doesn't bother me as much as i'm just curious how it'll go from open world to story 
missions. Well, but it will just like become an instance or something like that. But and like that's exactly my problem and my concern. The other thing is that the Diablo series has long had a problem with grievers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm assuming that PvP will have to be opted in. Oh, uh, of course, it's got to be. And, it's got to be. And I'm sure they they might have talked about this too. Loot won't be like you'll just every person in the open world will just have their own loot i'm guessing yeah so i suspect so too i don't know man not everything needs to be a fucking open world you know and i think that diablo was one of those games that i like whatever we'll see yeah maybe i'm wrong i feel like an open world is not going to add a lot to it i'm cautiously optimistic in the sense that i like a lot of what i've seen of the moment to moment gameplay i just i don't love the choice about the open world and i am leery about blizzard's recent everything so yeah we'll see how it shakes out in their words the game will be supported for years to come with both like story-based dlc and like Mm -hmm. other maybe just challenge dlc which is is yeah and like good to see like who knows what that'll be and that also it is going to be coming out for the playstation 4 playstation Yes. Five. Kind of Microsoft acquisition. It won't matter, so. It's not going to be tied to um, yeah. to Microsoft consoles. I'm not surprised by, but is yeah. good to have confirmation yeah. on. Yeah, exactly. Good to have confirmation on. Talking of kind of darker games, Scorn looks really fucking gross. Yeah. That's the game that I meant earlier when I said body horror yeah yeah I, I was getting them confused i didn't want to bring it up then because i knew that we would be talking about it later but i was pretty <laughs> sure what i was pretty sure i was like i think she means scorn yeah <laughs> scorn is one of those games where i remember like six or seven years ago hearing like ads within podcasts about this game and i was always because oh the, really yo yeah like during the uh the trailer is like, like, where do I know Scorn from? And then the narrator said, somber tones and rich tapestry. And that was always the tagline on any of the ad reads and uh, podcasts. It's like, oh, this is like the game I've been listening to ads for like seven years ago. Like, oh, this is what it looks like. Weird. So, yeah. I hope the people that play it like it, because I sure will not be. Yeah. <laughs> Very not my thing. I like that kind of like body horror style game. Well, you like Cronenberg, don't you? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. When they're explaining the game, it's like we'll have shooting elements, but it's not a shooter. Uh huh. And the story is all going to be told non-verbally. Yeah, within the world, no dialogue. It's intriguing, but it's really hard to pull off. You know. Yeah, I don't know, Matt. I can't do the whole HR Geiger thing. No, no, no. Like, I... Does not jive with me. I watched the whole thing, but I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, every time. I was like, man. Hopefully it's shorter. It's kind of looking like a walking simulator slash Bioshock yeah. style shooter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think horror games have to be shorter for it to yes. stay yeah. effective throughout i don't want to play it just because like the one line description is just it's disgusting veiny appendages <laughs> yeah <laughs> the problem with any kind of like body horror that's gross and weird that but it's also very easy to go like over the top where it becomes comical mm. there's mm. just like a, a fine line but staying on the same track of body horror i think high on life was one of the kind of first games oh <laughs> cartoony body horror yeah yeah what a bizarre <laughs> fucking i was very weirded out and then i saw from rick and morty creator yeah. and i went oh <laughs> it all makes yeah. sense. it's coming together now it's yes. gonna be all like the grossest part of ricky morty that i don't like about that show yeah. <laughs> in a video game <laughs> i think it'll be very successful within that fan base oh for sure yeah. um i guarantee it I-, I will say the minute they showed the first gun and had like a little like head on the back of it i'm like ooh, i wonder how many quips they've recorded because <laughs> conservatively one million yeah like <laughs> especially when you realize that all of the guns yeah. <laughs> and each reveal just like oh this is like the whole the whole thing so it's gonna say exactly. something inappropriate when you reload for sure <laughs> One hundred (laughs) percent. I completely kind of blocked that game out, honestly. Like high on life. 
I, I was, I, because I saw it, I was like, what the fuck is this? And then I saw it from the careers of Rick and Morty. And I was like, all right, a lot of things are making sense now. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that, like, games like that exist. Yeah. I can't necessarily say it's for me, but. It's going to hit the intersection of uh, Rick and Morty fans and fans of, like, Tiny Tina mm. style comedy. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're onto something it's, there, yeah. I think. It's a unique concept, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah. It could be fun. Yeah. Anything else that kind of grabbed your attention? I don't know if I'm into this or not, just because I've literally never seen it prior to this showcase, but Naraka? Naraka Blade Point? Yeah, it's... Oh, you know what? I looked it up just now. It's a Battle Royale. I don't care anymore. (laughs) It's a Bayonetta Battle Royale. I mean, I was kind of into the whole, like, wire foo style combat. I was like, oh, that looks interesting. But it's a Battle Royale, so I don't give a shit. Um, I'm a gigantic fan of the entire World of Darkness IP, and that was enough for me to enjoy Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt a bit, and I still only played that game for like two hours before I was done with it. So what I'm saying is that it takes a lot for me to give a shit about a battle royale. Anyway, yeah. glad we straightened that out. <laughs> Anything g- grab you guys? I was going to say Cocoon. Mm. That looked very interesting. It depends if you're into that uh, insider limbo style of, mm. of game but from what we saw of it like i think the gameplay looks a lot of fun and... they did a good job making inside and limbo similar enough but different enough that i think they'll do well with this one yeah the it, same just, way. it just seems to be building on the same kind of ideas but in more of a bigger 3d space they've done pretty well previously so um, i suspect that if you are already predisposed to those types of games this one will probably be good too. Mm-hmm. I at the very least will enjoy watching someone else mm-hmm. play it in mm-hmm. an edited YouTube video, which yeah. is how I've enjoyed the first two of those games. <laughs> Fair enough. So I guess like the other ones were as, as Dusk Falls, yeah. which seems interesting, which is an interactive narrative based game. And they did show like branching paths, which had a very like yeah, it was uh, Detroit. Detroit. Human. Yeah. Did you notice that it had everyone's favorite detective from Heavy Rain in it? No. He was there. Just well. just for half a second, but he's in it. Easter egg. And also, eight players can play the game, which is also... Yeah, interesting. Kind of yeah, interesting. It, so. Solo or up to eight. It's a very strange detail. I like the way it looks, for sure. Yeah. I have no idea what it's going to be like to play... It is not the kind of thing that I would generally be interested in, just because I like my games to have a bit more game, mm-hmm. yeah. right, yeah. to them. But I don't know. I found myself being drawn into the narrative a bit, yeah. despite the fact that there wasn't really much there. I'm a sucker for like horror or thrillers in deserts. I don't know why. There is like something about the isolation. Deserts are so are so weird and lifeless in a way that I've always found intriguing. And I think that it works really well with thrillers and horror as a, as a genre. I will probably not play it. I might watch someone else play it. Yeah, I'm wondering if the multiplayer aspect of this is designed to be more of a couch multiplayer, like pass the controller, like um, Until Dawn, Until kind of Dawn stuff. style, where it's just like this person makes the choices for this character. And you could do that online too, right? Um, it would it could work the same way, in the sense that any time that it was whoever, like everybody would be watching the game at the same time, and then mm-hmm. whenever you know fucking numbnuts is up, uh, you know only the one person's controller will actually be active and allow you to choose online scares me with that because one person having a bad internet (laughs) connection is going to ruin the game for everybody no (laughs) kidding could also lead to some hilarious outcomes but it would depend my strategy going into this is just you always pick the characters that look like they're gonna die first and then you can just sit back and not feel any pressure the rest of the game (laughs) Interesting thought process. Not unreasonable, mind. 
there's probably something to be said for that. Yeah. Well, should we get to the elephant in the room? <laughs> On this showcase <laughs> list? Yeah. Uh, it was coming the whole time. Starfield. Yeah. I have never felt so out of step with like my own reaction to a trailer versus what I was seeing online. Yeah. Boy, were a lot of people really amped about what yeah. they saw. Yeah. And I was so bored. As it went on, I got more interested in what they were showing. Mm -hmm. But it's just, again, it's like everything else that Bethesda had done. It, yeah. The performance stuff, I kind of give a break to because it's not like it's not done yet. Yeah. And well, whatever. I, that's the kind of thing where like the optimization could be uh, could be yeah. significantly improved between now and then. So that that part's whatever. Holy shit, the color palette. Oh, yeah. My god. I just everything. It's so muted. I, I don't like, get why developers are so scared of color. It's an outer space game. Anything is possible on any kind of world. And it's just at least what they've shown now is just muted bright colors and then like 90 variations of gray. Right? You did see some bright colors in the urban centers, right? That they that they showed. Yeah. But they were so muted. Yeah. It's like they, they took everything that was an actual color and were like, what if we like made it pastel? <laughs> and, and this demo could have had like, you know, um, like film grain on or something like that. Because mm -hmm, I know mm -hmm. that's a thing popular with, yes with some of these like mass effect has it so it could be something like that if it was just when you put your like space visor down or something sure yeah would be sure. cool the kind of same effect as if you put on sunglasses right like mm -hmm. that would that would make sense but no it was just just felt kind of lifeless you can do the kind of grimy run down thing mm -hmm. in sci-fi but usually you do it in sci-fi horror where everything is kind of constricted and there's like an oppressive feeling that you're trying to evoke right like alien yeah. is a great example of that not a lot of bright colors in alien but it's also do it doesn't feel so washed out all the time either well a lot of the darkness in those is usually story driven too you're in a place with no electricity anymore or your ship's yeah. running out of power now or something like that exactly or even if it's not like you're losing power you're just you're in a you're in a constricted environment and there's just like so much light to go around it was a really weird choice and all of this would be fine right like all of these this stuff about you know my feelings around the design would be fine if the gameplay looked <laughs> I don't know, any different than anything that Bethesda has done yeah. in the last 20 years. I guess it's a situation where, the, like, for a lot of people, they just want more of that, and that's fine. But, like, man, I'm over it. Yeah, I think in the trailer they did mention the uh, Explorers Club. Yes. So I hope, like, exploration is a huge part. It's Bethesda, so I'm sure it will be, in fairness. But, like, I guess what I'm saying is, like, more meaningful explanation than just, like, flying there, going there, driving here. Mm. Like, little payoffs. So if they're serious about the, like, thousand explorable planets thing, a lot of that is going to be procedurally generated. Oh, it will have to yeah. be. Can they do that in a way that is still interesting? Or do we have a... I know that we've got our different views on this, on this, Darren. You and I both love Mass Effect. It is my view. <laughs> the non-story related planets that you can explore in the original Mass Effect fucking suck. Oh, shit. It is yeah. a bunch of rock with like three points of interest. And if you're going to make like 990 of those and then have like 10 like handcrafted that isn't fun yeah right but in the defense of mass effect it's not like you have the whole planet to find three points of interest it is like no a square even that gets tedious right well, and so yeah. if you're going if you're going to do this something like that to the nth degree and like i want to be clear i'm sure that that's not their plan but my concern is that you could run into the same issues mm -hmm. I get why they're going for the big scope yeah. Oh, yeah. because it's sci-fi and there's space travel and that makes sense. But I don't know, man. Thousands a lot. I feel yeah. like they're going to do like Raft. A lot of people couldn't tell if it was procedurally generated or not when they first played it. But they have like bigger 
story islands and they lead you to each other but then that's buffed out with like a bunch of smaller places you can go to and your main motivation to go there is to get stuff to like mm. in this game i'm sure to like make your ship better sure. just get some more like story details if you want that kind of thing i think it could work if it did if they're smart that they'll do that i have honestly always found bethesda games to have really really underwhelming story anyway like the the thing that gets praised about those games is the way that it handles exploration and environmental storytelling and i'll grant you that they're good at that that just doesn't carry a game for me no and i know it does for a lot of bethesda fans and that's fine but with the gameplay appearing to be how it appears i don't know they did confirm the narrative director who did Far Harbor in Fallout 4. Mm, They're mm -hmm. the lead story designer for Starfield. And for what it's worth, like, Far Harbor is probably the best story location from Fallout 4. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like a smaller island, tighter narrative. Like, it's, sure. it's not trying to be this giant space epic. Yeah, I think it's going to end up being more like Skyrim. There's kind of a story there. And sure, there's thousands of caves, but they're all the exact same after you've been to five of them. Yeah. And I worry that besides from the, the big story-based planets, that's what the rest of them are going to be. And this is why I have very little interest. Yeah. yeah. I got less interested the more I saw because they just kept adding... Yeah, yeah. Gameplay styles. It was like an FPS, and then it was a space fighter like yep. simulator. And then it was like base building. a Bioware. Yeah, base building, and then Bioware squad team building type gameplay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is just, no, it's too much. <laughs> if you can make all of these systems work well, I'd be happy to eat my words, yeah. but that's that's going to be a tough sell. Mm -hmm. but and I have not seen anything from Bethesda up till this point to give me the confidence that they're capable of that maybe they'll have romance options though i what i mean what a choice um <laughs> the returning of traits is exciting mm. i think uh, i don't remember exactly but i think it it seemed like in the uh gameplay trailer you can pick up to three to have yes when you were selecting your origin there and again yeah like yeah. you said they're introducing origin stories is exciting mm -hmm. too. Granted, I will say, I feel like probably what they showed us was in the first two hours of the game. So who knows if your sure. if your origin story um, or background matters twenty hours from then or not? Does any of this still impact anything? Yeah. I'm sure the traits will, because like I think I had read a few after the showcase, and one of the ones was like chronic jumper or something in that. So you had to like always be jumping and then if you stop for a certain oh my God. amount of time like some kind of negative effect will happen that would be a thing that would be <laughs> funny for the first like 10 minutes yeah. and then get incredibly tedious it's a big ambitious game yeah we'll see if it can pull it off and starfield is the game that has me to believe that when they say all these games will be out in 2023 they're talking You're about, like, uh -huh. like, November, late November 2023. It's also possible that they have just, like, lied to themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. That, that, that it'll be done by summer next year. And, like, more power to you if you can make it happen. But I've got my doubts. Yeah. If it gets delayed till December, it'll still be out before fucking Star Citizen. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I think that about covers it. We could talk about the PC gaming show, but there wasn't really much there. A few repeats of mm -hmm. Bethesda, Microsoft. Some bad looking ones. Some bad looking ones. I'm interested to see if Demon School is actually any good. And there's the remake of System Shock. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't actually have much to say on either of those like demon school they outright say that it's inspired by persona that's enough for me to give it a look <laughs> we'll see if it's actually any good and i never actually played system shock so i have no opinions i saw what it looked like before and it's good that it's being remade it looks like it needed a facelift so the altars looked weird the invincible looked weird the altars did look weird looked like it could be really good but 
I'm kind of thinking it's like a sim tower. Yeah. With I, expendable characters. I just need to see more. Yeah. To have uh, have a view on it because. I could see it going a really interesting place, and I could also see it being, like, really up its own ass and something that I have no interest in exploring. Yeah, which is what The Invincible looked like to me. A bit up its own ass. <laughs> Mm, walking mm -hmm. simulator with a way too convoluted of a narrative someone that <laughs> wanted to write movies and it was just like i'll just make my own game instead david cage <laughs> also hideo kojima to a lesser extent yeah um cool yeah all right any other game thoughts many but not for right now yeah i don't think yeah Darren? No, I, I think I've pretty much said all I've wanted to say, so... Great. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody, for taking the time to watch this. Uh, check out the various socials, which you will find in the uh, description. We're Polychrome. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>